Look, if you're a budding photographer, you are probably wondering what an 18 to 55 millimeter is and what is it used for. So what does it mean in a nutshell? Well, the 18 to 55 millimeter is also known as a kit lens, which means that it comes bundled with your first starter camera. It is cheap, lightweight, and a great option for beginners to improve their photography skills. It's also very versatile, so you can use it for a number of scenes from landscapes to portraits. Why are kit lenses called starter lenses? It is considered a starter glass because of a few reasons. The first reason is that they come with your first camera, so in most instances, these are the first lenses anyone ever uses. Kit lenses also have a variable aperture. To put it in simpler terminology, how wide the aperture can open is directly related to how zoomed in the lens is. If the zoomed-in subject is at a far distance, the aperture is wider, and if the subject is zoomed in is near the photographer, the aperture closes smaller. This can be somewhat confusing for someone who is just beginning to learn photography and camera settings and features. Take note, though, that other lenses will be different from this and will not have a variable aperture phenomenon. So you will have to take this thing into account as long as you are using a kit lens to take photos. There are also a few things to look at. Kit glass is not that sharp, so the end result wouldn't be as crisp and clean like a pro-level image. It's also made of plastic instead of metal like those of the expensive high-end glass. And this is why they're cheap and they are deliberately made this way by manufacturers because there is so much competition. So they try to keep their cameras priced down by using inexpensive plastic materials. You can still take great photos and use it adequately well enough. What is an 18 to 55 millimeter lens good for? If you have just bought a camera with an 18 to 55 millimeter lens, you're probably wondering what is the 18 to 55 millimeter lens good for? Here are the primary reasons why it's pretty good. While the 18 to 55 millimeter is not considered wide, the 18 millimeter perspective offers a moderately wide angle glass, excellent for landscapes and architecture. The 55 millimeter range is more relevant for portraits, passport photos, and when one wants to capture small details, like for macro photography. The 18mm focal length allows you to change the focal length and aperture frequently and fast. It allows you to capture numerous photos in different styles without switching them. It is great for portraits. The telephoto feature allows you to create a shallow depth of field and isolate your object from the background. What do the numbers on an 18 to 55mm lens mean? Camera glass usually has numbers informing you of its focal length and aperture. The numbers in millimeters on them indicate their focal length. Prime lenses usually have a single focal length, while zoom lenses have numerous focal length. So 18 to 55 millimeter photography is the focal length range, which means you can adjust the focal length. The widest angle is 18 millimeters, which can be zoomed into 55 millimeters. The 3.5 to 5.6 refers to aperture, meaning how wide it can open or let light in. Aperture is a whole other conversation, which we'll discuss in another video. By the way, be sure to tap that notification bell so you know when our next video comes out. Is the 18 to 55 millimeter lens good for portraits? The simple answer is yes. Provided you know how to use it, you can take great portrait photos with this kit lens. While the 85 millimeter is said to be the best focal length for great portraits, the versatility of the 18 to 55 millimeter lens allows adjusting it to its full length, achieving still excellent portraits. Granted, you'll need a bit more experience to make it work to the best, of course. So what is required of you to achieve good portraits? Keep a desirable distance between the subject and the background. And this allows you to get an excellent shallow depth of field, resulting in a blurred background. Maximize the focal length of the 55mm while zooming into your subject. Consequently, this reduces the maximum aperture to f5.6, and in this case, ensure you have enough natural light. However, the 18-55mm is not your best option for professional purposes. You will struggle to get any bokeh, and the lens will not get that much sharpness around the edges. What are the pros of the kit lens in photography? Well, first, it's inexpensive. A fair price is one of the things that make the 18 to 55 millimeter good for beginner photographers that they buy for their first camera in the kit version. Second, flexibility with the focal lengths. The 18 to 55 millimeter provides a focal length ranging from reasonably wide angle to short telephoto. Unlike prime lenses with a fixed focal length, with these, you can comfortably zoom in or out to get the desired photo without having to move your own body. Next, it provides a learning opportunity without investing too much. Lenses for professional shooting are inexpensive, hence not suitable for beginners as one risks getting them damaged. 
However, with the 18 to 55 mm being quite affordable, an amateur photographer can comfortably practice without worrying as much. And finally, it's affordable and lightweight. Compared to other lenses, these ones are made of less expensive material. They weigh around 12 pounds, adding a little weight to your DSLR. They're also easily portable, making them suitable if you don't like carrying heavy cameras. What are the cons of kit lenses in photography? Now that you know what an 18 to 55 mm glass is and how it can help you as a beginner, let's find out what its shortcomings are and why pros don't use them as much. Definitely, it is a decent one, but it has its limitations, and once you start to get better at taking photos, you will realize that. First, it has limited aperture. So if you look forward to doing more with your photos, the 18 to 55 mm might disappoint you. What is the aperture in a camera's lens? It's the opening that allows light into the camera body. The 18 to 55 mm has a larger aperture of f3.5 to 5.6 compared to 50 mm with an aperture of f1.2. An aperture of f1.2 means that the lens has a larger hole which results in a narrower depth of field, producing a more blurry background than when shooting at f5.6. In other words, the 18 mm focal length is still not wide enough and you may need an even smaller focal length for a wide angle view and to fit in more with the view field. Similarly, the 55 mm lens may not get you as close as to what you're trying to focus on. Second, variable aperture. The 18 to 55 mm is an excellent example of variable aperture as it contains a range in aperture size. While in a fixed aperture, a prime glass, the aperture width depends on the focal length. The widest aperture can open in a variable aperture depending on how far it is zoomed. Thus, the kit glass is not your best option if you want to shoot a photo with an aperture width of more than 5.6. Also, it's limited in quality. Truth be told, the quality of the material used to make these types of lenses is of lower quality. Quality ones are expensive, and for a camera to come with them at no extra cost means their quality is compromised. Consider becoming a professional photographer by purchasing separate high-quality ones to maintain your image standards. It also has slower autofocus. The autofocus in this glass is slower and less effective. They're not a good choice if you want to capture numerous images quickly and noiselessly, especially in a super quiet setting. On better quality glass, the autofocus is fast and has no noise. Kit lenses also don't have a wide maximum aperture, which is mainly because of the associated costs. And that's when we come into the problem of material quality. They are made of cheap and low quality materials, ensuring the cost of the camera is kept low. Unlike other high quality ones that are made of metal, these ones are made of plastic, increasing their ease of breakage and reducing their durability. Expensive lenses are a lot more rugged and durable as they are made from metal and have weatherproofing. Now I understand that learning a new skill can be frustrating, however, you can speed up your progress if you have the right guidance and teachers you can learn from. There are several online photography courses that you can consider, here are a few. Digital Camera Mastery, Photo Shortcuts, and Expert Photography. While it sounds like expert photography is for more advanced photographers, that's not really the case. They mostly have beginner to intermediate level courses, ebooks, etc. So if you're a complete beginner, I would highly recommend Mark Hemmings as your instructor, particularly the Digital Camera Mastery course. I have a lot of video reviews of his courses, so as always, be sure to check the description box below. I list out everything for you to click on, and it gets better. As our YouTube channel subscriber, you can get a bonus, the Creative Photography Cookbook for 80% off. If that's something you're interested in, enter your best email below to get more details and a discount. That's all that we have for you today. Share your thoughts in the comments and we'll see you at the next video.